Hi folks, Craig Barra here. In this video, we're going to take a look at a creature creation workflow utilizing Autodesk Maya, Mudbox, and Mesh Mixer. Then what we're going to do is we're going to translate our creature from the virtual world into the physical world using this awesome 3D printer from Zortrax. This is the M200, and the quality that comes out of this machine is quite mind-boggling. So we're going to take a look at how I can bring my creature into reality, and then I'm going to go over a bit of an overview of the uh, hand working process. I'm going to get into some hand painting of this creature. Let's take a look. The overall concept of this creature is kind of uh, a lamprey meets like a zombie. I affectionately call this guy the viscerator and uh, he is just kind of this lurking kind of creature. The way I started out with this was I simply took the base uh, human body actually from Mudbox and brought it into Maya and just augmented the head here. I needed a place that I could model in the details or sculpt in the details within the, uh, the mouth area especially. And then in Mudbox it was a matter of stacking up some layers and starting to work in the base forms, the base structure of this guy. He's very bony, uh, sinewy. Um, but there is a little bit of musculature in there, so I'm just simply sculpting up some of these forms. And then as we build up, I start to get into things like uh, using stamps. And this is, in this case, I'm using vector displacement ma mapping to uh, detail in the teeth or the fangs in this character. Um, using things like the grab brush, I'm simply reorienting, reorienting uh, areas or bones and just changing around the overall shape or the symmetry of the, of the creature. And then, of course, for... Um, display purposes here we can put him into a kind of a creepy pose and I actually took this guy and on the Zortrax M200 um, as a test I printed him out fully as a fully standing statuette and he came out amazing but what I want to do is actually bring up the detail on this character and just work with it as a bust so that I have something a little larger and something with um, you know a little more details that I can actually get in and, and do some hand painting on so this is where I'm using Maya. I'm just simply using the modeling toolkit to delete away faces. And in this case, I'm using something handy here. I'm just taking a couple of cylinders and using booleans to cut away parts of the arms. And it's also sealing off the arms based on the cylinder geometry there as well. This is where I just export as an OBJ and go into Mesh Mixer. And the reason why I do this, uh, for 3D printing, Mesh Mixer is excellent. Using the Edit tool set, and the make solid feature specifically, um, at first go, you're gonna get this low resolution uh, version of it. But if you crank up the settings on it and just update that or apply that, you're gonna get a really nice, dense, evenly uh, populated triangulated mesh. And you'll notice that everything is nicely capped off. All of the details are preserved and it's all set for 3D printing. If you find that it is still a little too heavy, you can actually reduce it in there, or you can even take it in a mud box and use the reduction algorithm. Now we're gonna take a look at the Zortrax M200. Excellent printer. The diversity of the materials is really good. They're adding to these materials all the time. And in this case, I'm using their uh, Z Ultra T or Z Ultra material, which is a really robust, very uh, precise, uh, material and I found it really excellent to work with um, with sculpting this guy or actually finishing the model. I'm going to use a really fine resolution in here at 0.09 millimeters. You'd be surprised how much detail this Zortrax uh, M200 can pack into uh, ABS material here. This is the slicing algorithm we're using Z Suite or Z Suite and in this case we're seeing our support structures. We're getting a preview of it before we print. And this character, this bust, because I cranked up the resolution, I put kind of a medium fill on there, so he's he's got a little bit of density to him uh, when you hold him. This was about a 20-hour print on uh, my my Zortrax M200, and I have to say the the printing quality of this machine is really amazing. Um, the the supports pry off very easily, very quickly, and the the amount of cleanup or lack thereof for that matter was pretty impressive. Um, right away breaking off the supports it was clear that there's not a lot of cleanup that I needed to do uh, in order to prep this or, or paint this guy. So here we're getting into some of this hand finishing and I'm just simply using like a pick tool, a simple file and there were just a couple little tiny areas where I might have had a little bit of support material uh, remaining and I'm getting a little picky here. I'm using some sandpaper just to file down some edges where I bully into the arms where there might have been a little bit too sharp along the edges. So I'm just kind of smoothing those out. 
And then I'm blasting off, making sure I get rid of all the dust before I get into painting them. Here I'm using um, a nice uh, a, a adhesion promoter. And this is where it's essentially like a primer, but with ABS material, this works great. You're essentially putting a material down, a base material that's going to allow you to put a, a paint coat on there. And here's the brand I'm using, I'm using Duplicolor Adhesion Promoter. Works excellent with ABS. And within minutes, you're able to quickly put down your base coat of paint. In this case, in case I'm just using a simple tan brown uh, to start with. Um, and then once this is all dried, and it's like a primer base paint, so it's very quick drying paint. I can now start to work with this um, by hand. And the key with uh, painting up this guy is working in layers, right? So the quality of the, the 3D printed mesh from the Zortrax M200 is so excellent that I really wanted to make sure that all these details came through nicely from all the sculpting work that I had done in Mudbox. And as you can see, the quality of the, uh, the printing speaks for itself. It uh, came out beautifully. Um, one of the crazy things with this machine that I found is the typically with 3D printing, you're going to have failed prints. That's a given. It's just the nature of, of the beast with it. I'm going to say something kind of bold here. I've yet to actually have um, any kind of substantially failed print on my uh, Zortrax M200. The, the quality is really astounding. Um, so this is excellent, I find, for doing creature things. And I'm starting to see some people out there doing a lot of different organic kind of 3D printing with the M200, so that's exciting. So I hope you enjoyed that brief overview of a creature creation workflow from Autodesk Maya, Mudbox, and we took a look at Mesh Mixer for preparing the mesh for 3D printing. As you can see, the quality from the Zortrax M200 is awesome. Quite often you'll see this machine being used for anything from hard surfaced kind of nice uh, edge work for engineering all the way to a lot of organic work now. I'm starting to see a lot of creature guys out there uh, 3D printing creatures and organic sculpts. And the last thing I should point out uh, is with this guy here, I actually sprayed um, a sealant on him so that everything is sealed in and is protected to not affect the paint. Thanks so much for watching.